This video is the third of a six video series where we are building a computer vision game that you can play hands free just using your hand gestures. So far we have loaded Google's media pipe model for hand detection and been able to move our tiny rocket on the screen using hand gestures. In this video we will build the obstacles that is an infinite meteor shower coming from the top. We will make the shower pause when the hands are not detected and resume when the hands are on the screen making the game pause and play in response to our hands. I do recommend that you start watching from the first video in the series you'll find the link to the complete series under the video or on my channel's home page i'll post the github repository link once the game is complete okay so we have already built the feature where we can move the rocket using our hand gestures now let's go ahead and build infinite boulders coming down from the top to show the boulders i'm going to create a component so div and i'm going to give it some class names position as absolute z10 h screen with screen and overflow hidden and inside this we'll be looping over the boulders array so for that i'm going to create a state variable state snippet so this will be the boulders array and this will be an array of any and i'm going to initialize it with two empty objects just to show something on the screen in place of the boulders so here we'll be mapping over the boulders array that we just created boulders.map and it takes a lambda function which receives each boulder along with the index and here we'll be returning a boulder component this boulder component will create in the components directory so new file boulder component and tsrafc the e7 plus snippet and for the div i'm just going to give it a class name with background red height 24 with 24 and a border just to show something in place of the boulder and here we'll be importing the boulder component and whenever we use map to show multiple sibling jsx components next.js expects that we provide a key unique key to each of them and we are going to use the index which is nothing but a serial number of each boulder within that boulder array now if you refresh we can see that uh, our two boulders are being shown on the page now let's put them in random places on the page so for that i'm going to go to the boulders component and on top we are going to define two state variables state snippet x state which is nothing but the left attribute of the boulder component i'm going to say the initial value is zero i'm going to import it from react and do the same thing for a y state which is going to be the top attribute of the boulder so here i'm going to use that style uh, left is equal to the x state and top is equal to the y state and i'm going to give a position of absolute now if we set this x state and y state using random variables that means the boulder will be placed in random places on the page so let's do that i'm going to use the use effect hook here so whenever the boulder component loads that is why i'm going to set a empty dependency array and the code block is going to run use effect i'm going to import from react and here i'm going to say set x state is equal to math dot random and I'm going to multiply it with the window dot inner width and I'm going to do the same thing y state math dot random and I could use inner height but I'm just going to give a hundred variability on the y axis so if we refresh now we can see that the boulders are placed quite randomly on the x axis and on the y axis the maximum is about 100 pixels now let me go ahead and put a boulder image inside this container so for that i'm just going to paste a png file in the public directory and i found this online uh, i'll leave a link to this asset under the video but you can use any other png image for this and inside the div i'm going to use an image tag from next.js so first i'll import that import image from next slash image i'm going to create that image tag here and it is asking me to add the missing attributes which is going to be the source and the alt attribute for source i'm going to write met.png because that is the name of the asset and also i'm going to have to give it a width of 80 pixel and a height of 80 pixel now we don't need the background div which we used so for the container i'm just going to remove all the classes so now we have boulders randomly placed on the screen now one thing to note here is that the math.random uh, generates value from 0 to 1 and let's say if i use a value 0 0.99 and refresh this 
we can see that this is so closed so basically the container uh, where we are setting the left attribute the container gets pushed to the right so closely that it does not even have the 80 pixel width so that is why the image gets shrunk down to fix that what we are going to do is that uh, for the window.inner width uh, we are going to give it a 80 pixel padding so that way whenever we refresh we can see that even if we set it as one we can see that we always have some space and these boulders are not getting shrunk down but if we uh, use zero which is the lower value uh, then we can see that similar amount of space is available on the left side as well so we know the boulders are being placed symmetrically on the x-axis and on the y-axis we are giving a variability of 100 pixel so let me go ahead and replace that with math.random now let me go ahead and give each boulder a random rotation so for that i'm going to write another state variable uh, rotation and this is going to be zero and as initial value we are going to say set rotation math.random times 360 and we could give the rotation to the container itself but this container will be later used to detect collision with the rocket component giving it a rotation uh, will only complicate the collision detection logic so i'm going to add the rotation to the image itself so i'm going to give style rotate use the tilde notation dollar rotation degree and if you refresh we can see that we have random rotations for each of these boulders now let's go ahead and make these boulders fall from the top and for that we are going to use css animation so in the global.css file i'm just going to first define a keyframe at the red keyframes and i'm going to call it move down and it text from and to for the from we don't want to specify anything uh, and for the two i'm going to say top and i'm going to use 700 pixel for now and now we're going to go to the boulders component and add that animation to the container so animation move down the keyframe that we specified in the global.css file and i'm going to say two second for the animation duration linear function and forwards the forwards make sure that the after the animation ends the component stays in the final position so now we can see that the boulders are falling from the top and they stay stuck at the at the final position so whenever we refresh the boulders are being created in random locations and they fall to the 700 pixel location now obviously the generation and the final destination of these boulders will happen out of the screen so the generation will happen above the screen and the destination will probably be 2000 pixels so that they fall off the bottom edge but for now while we are developing let me keep the boulders on the screen so that we can see what is happening now next step is to generate boulders randomly so these boulders array we are initializing with two empty objects let me go ahead and remove that and create a use effect hook and this is going to be an empty dependency array so this is going to run whenever the page loads i could add this code block inside this use effect as well but i'm just going to separate it out in a different block and inside this use effect hook we are going to write set interval and let's say we want to generate four boulders every one second so we'll say that every one second set boulders and it takes the previous array and we're going to spread out the previous array and add four boulders after it we could use the return here and wrap it within curly braces it's basically the same notation i'm just going to use the notation because we'll be extending this code uh, in just in a while but let me show what is happening here so you can see that every one second we are generating boulders but we are generating much more boulders than four which we expect the reason is that when we are setting this interval as we mentioned uh, in our last video that whenever we are setting interval we should always keep in mind that these components may get loaded and unloaded multiple times so it is always a best practice whenever we are setting an interval or setting a timeout to write a clearing statement along with it so what we're going to do is that we're going to set generation interval and we're going to define this interval let generation interval as any and whenever the component unloads we're going to say return an arrow function and inside that arrow function we're going to write clear interval generation interval that way if we refresh we can see that every second we are generating four boulders but the thing is that these boulders remain in the dom so basically the html elements that represent these boulders remain inside the dom clogging up the memory so we want to write another loop that basically clears the boulders every five seconds for example so for that i'm going to write another 
uh, interval removal interval is equal to set interval it will take an arrow function which will run every five seconds and i'll define this removal interval here so we want to remove the boulders that are five seconds older but that means that we will need a timestamp in each of these objects that represent a boulder so that we can use that timestamp to find out if those boulders are five seconds older or not so we'll have to rewrite this code here so for that uh, i'm going to remove this return statement i'm going to rather say let return array is equal to a copy of the previous array and finally we'll be returning this return array but we'll be pushing objects inside this return array before that so for uh, adding four boulders i'm going to write a for loop let i is equal to zero i less than four i plus plus and here we're going to say it return array is equal to spread out the return array and add one boulder which will have a timestamp so for that i'm going to create the timestamp first now is equal to date dot now and here timestamp is going to be the now i'm also going to add a unique key to each boulder which will later be used while rendering it on next.js page that is going to be a combination of the timestamp as well as a random number let me write that now hyphen math dot random the reason is that in the unlikely case when we are generating these boulders four boulders at a time if more than one boulder have the same timestamp in that case we are at least generating a unique key because this uh, unique key will be used to identify each sibling components in the next.js page and next.js expects this key to be unique across the siblings so now if we refresh the behavior is exactly the same but now we are in a position to use this timestamp to remove these boulders which are five seconds older so here in the set interval i'm going to say set boulders as usual this is going to get the previous array and whatever we return from this is going to be set as the boulders and we could return the previous array but we'll be returning a filtered version of it and it takes an arrow function which receives each boulder as well as an index and whenever we return true from this uh, filter function that specific boulder is going to be filtered in others going to be filtered out so first we're going to get a timestamp here const now is equal to date dot now and we're going to return true only for those boulders where now minus p dot timestamp is less than five second now if we go ahead and refresh we can see that the boulders are generating and falling but you can see that the older boulders are not being removed rather it seems that the new boulders are being removed so what is happening here is that since we are using the index to identify the sibling components here what is happening is that let's say there are 10 boulders and the first one two three four are removed after five seconds that means the new ones now are getting the indexes 0 1 2 3 4 but next just engine thinks since those have the the same key that basically makes a next.js engine keep those older ones on the page because the index did not change because whenever we're looping over these boulders uh, although the older ones got removed the index one two three four still remained because there are still some boulders on the array so that is why we used a specific key that is a combination of timestamp and the random number that is a very unique key for each of those boulders so if we use that that bug gets fixed so what we'll do is that b dot key now if we save and refresh we can see the boulders are being generated every one second and boulders that are five seconds or older they are being removed so that way we'll be able to make sure that the older ones are not clogging up the memory on our page now let me go ahead and change the source and destination of these boulders so i'll go to the boulders component and first i'll make the y state i'll make it negative math dot random times 100 i will again push it by another 100 so that way the boulders are generated above the screen i'm going to make this move down animation to be 10 seconds long and i'm also going to go to the global.css file and make the destination 2000 pixel so that way the boulders are being generated above the screen and they're going to fall out of the screen now let me go ahead and add some shadow to each of these boulders so for that I could go ahead and 
add a shadow class here but the thing is that that actually adds a box shadow but since our boulders have a transparent background so we want the shadow to be surrounding the object in the image and not the square frame of the image so basically what we need is a drop shadow so for that you can search for drop shadow generator css this is a website that allows you to tweak the drop shadows you can also change the color and copy this and we will go to the global.css file and create a class boulder shadow and here we'll paste that code now in the boulder component we could add this drop shadow to the image but if we do that then the drop shadow will also be rotated so let me show that so if we add a class here we can see that the shadow also got rotated along with the boulder which is not ideal because the light source will be coming from one direction that is why we need to add this class to the container which does not rotate now if we refresh we can see that the although the boulders are rotated the corresponding shadows are coming all on the same direction now this is too much offset in my opinion so i'm going to reduce that so i'm going to go to the global.css and give it 10 pixel and this is 10 pixels so it, is, it will come from top left and for the blur i'm going to use 5 pixel as you can see this is too much dark so you might be tempted to change this to let's say 666666 a gray shade but in that case uh, the shadow does become softer but the thing is that once you switch to dark mode this shows this glowing gray color so it's always recommended whenever you are working with shadow always use the opacity to change the brightness or lightness of the shadow so i'm going to add two more characters after this that is six six and that way the shadow does become softer but we are now working with opacity that means if we switch it to dark mode we don't get any shadow which is kind of the ideal case for dark mode that means uh, we'll also want to add some shadow to this rocket component so let me go ahead and create a copy of this this will be rocket shadow now since the boulders will be on top of the rocket component so we want to give it the impression that the rocket is little closer to the ground so for that i'm going to say this is three pixel and the blur is going to be two pixel and finally in the rocket component uh, we'll be adding this rocket shadow class in the container of the rocket icon that will make sure whenever we are rotating the rocket using our hands the shadow does not rotate with it now as one last thing we want to play and pause this animation so whenever our hands are detected we want to make sure that the animation runs that is the boulders are falling from the top but whenever hands are not detected we want to pause everything so for that we are already saving this state whether or not hands are being detected or not in the state variable is detected in the page.tsx file we want to pass this information to the boulder component as well so i'm going to write another property here is moving and i'm going to set it as is detected i'll have to create this property in the boulder component so here i'm going to write is moving and i'm going to create it as a optional parameter and this is going to be of type boolean i'll destructure it here is moving and here in the container i'm going to say animation play state if it is moving then i'm going to say it is running else it is paused now if we refresh we'll not be able to see any boulders but whenever we bring up our hand we can see that the boulders are coming so there are two issues here as we can see that let's say if we remove our hand we'll be able to see that after five seconds the boulder component gets removed and the boulders are still being generated even hands are not being detected and the boulders are not moving and they are being generated above the screen so if we bring up our hand we can see that much more than i don't know four boulders are coming the reason is that those two loops that is the generation loop and the removal loop are still running in the back end even if the boulders are paused on the screen so for that you will go to the page.tsx file the logic of creation and removal will place it inside a if block where we'll be checking if our hands are being detected so this this use effect hook runs on load of the page rather we want to add the dependency is detected here so this code block is going to run whenever the state of the is detected is going to change and we are going to check if is detected is true then only go ahead and set this to loops that is going to generate the boulders and remove these boulders 
and whenever the state changes uh, clear the previous uh, interval and create new intervals only when is detected state is true so as you can see we will also have to add this clearing statement for the removal interval as well so in summary this code block is going to run only when the is detected state changes and every time this code block runs the previous interval going to be removed and a new set of intervals that is for the generation and the removal is going to be created only when is detected is true now if you save it and refresh You can see if we bring up our hand, everything works as usual and the boulders that are already on the screen are not being removed because there is no removal interval running at this moment. As soon as we bring up our hand, the generation interval comes up as well as a new removal interval gets created which is going to take care of the older boulders every 5 seconds. And as soon as we bring our hands down, we can see the boulders are stopped and they are not being removed from the screen. So that is the effect of playing and pausing the game later when we'll be creating the game overlay we'll be showing a play pause indicator on the page that will tell the user that the game has been paused